Hello everyone, I hope everyone is doing good and all is well. Today's chat is going to be about one of the most shocking acts of racially motivated vigilante injustice in U.S. history. We're going to chat about none other than the Old Bell County Jail Massacre. In the wee hours of the night on May the 25th, 1874, an angry mob took the law into their own hands and ended the lives of nine prisoners in the Bell County Jail. You may wonder why, and most importantly, how? Well, let me fill you in. And with that being said, let's chat. Bell County, Texas. Bell County was created from Millam County just five years after Texas entered the Union. Texas's entry into the Union was on December the 29th, 1845. Now prior to that, Texas was a part of Mexico before becoming an independent country in 1836. Texas entered the Union as the 28th state within the United States. And during the Civil War, the Union included the national government, the 20 free states, and the five border slave states that supported the Union. And the Union was opposed by and at war with the Confederacy, which consisted of the 11 southern slave-owning states that separated from the Union and joined together. And on February the 1st, 1861, Texas decided to separate from the Union. Texas joined the Confederate States on March the 2nd, 1861. Texas's entry into the Confederate States came after Texas replaced Governor Sam Houston. Now, Governor Houston, he had refused to take an oath of allegiance to the Confederacy. Texas's entry into the Union was also their response to the election of President Abraham Lincoln. Now, as I stated earlier, Bell County was created five years after Texas joined the Union. And the first settlers of the land, they built saloons, houses, stores, and hotels. And the town initially prospered. The county commissioner, he even chose the county seat within Bell County. Now, the county seat, it was on the banks of Nolan Creek, and the town was known as Nolansville. Now, two years after, on January the 12th, 1852, the town of Nolanville, Nolansville was renamed to Belton. And in 1854, the two-story log structure was built within Belton County to serve as the first Belton County Jail. Now the log jail that was initially built, it was replaced by a building of native limestone in 1873. Now Belton, as I said, it prospered quite well and it prospered until Texas lined up behind the South during the Civil War. Now, Texas was a slave state at this time, so many were not surprised when this happened. But the war, it brought many hardships to all sides of Texas. And one of the hardships, it was the barriers to trade and import goods, which lasted all throughout the war. Transportation networks were damaged. No goods were being imported from the North. I mean, remember, they were at war with the North, so of course they were not sending them any type of supplies or goods. And the Union blockades, they made it difficult for cotton growers to export their crops. And without these larger trade networks, Texas residents, they suffered from shortages of all kinds. Now, when the Civil War ended on April the 9th, 1865, Texas did not get the memo. The news did not reach Texas until June the 19th, 1965, several weeks later, when General Gordon Granger and the United, I'm sorry, the Union forces landed in Galveston to occupy the state and order the emancipation of all slaves in Texas. 
And this day, June the 19th, is now celebrated as Juneteenth. Now, Reconstruction after the war was very brutal for African Americans in Texas and many other states throughout the South. Race wars were raging, white supremacy was rising, and African Americans were losing. Between 1865 and 1868 alone, there were nearly a thousand recorded African American lives taken. And there were many more that went unrecorded as well. I mean, African American remains, they were being found everywhere. In creeks, floating in rivers, and even lying along the sides of the roads and streets. And the government, they did very little and sometimes nothing at all about the African American lives taken. And fearful of a strong central government, Texas, they approved a new constitution in 1876, which severely limited the power of the governor. And this same constitution of 1876, it remains as the basic law in Texas today. And even with the emancipation, the black citizens still had no rights nor did they receive equal justice as their white counterparts. And this pretty much relates to why we're all here today. The Old Bell County Jail Massacre of 1874. In the wee hours of the night of May the 25th, 1874, citizens of Belton heard hundreds of horse hooves clattering on the hard scrabble of Belton streets. The horses were mounted by a mob of max white men making their way to the town's jail. And one of the citizens awakened by the sound of the hundreds of hooves pounding the ground was Dr. Taylor Hudson. Dr. Hudson was one of the men who was supposed to be guarding nine of ten black prisoners locked up within the Belton jail. Now, the nine prisoners were William Henry Grumbles, John Alexandra, also known as John Daly, Lloyd Clemens, J.S. McDonald, Marion McDonald, William S. Smith, and three other men who were known only by their last names, Becknell, Wingfield, and Crow. Now, according to the reports, eight of the nine men were charged with various crimes that included robbery and horse death. And one of the men had taken his wife's life with an ax. According to the reports, now the reports also differ as to which man ended the life of his wife. Now, the nine men, they had been arrested by Sheriff Robert Bonham Halley and his deputies. And after the men were arrested, the papers published information about the men's arrest and the location in which they were being held. And when word got out where the men were being held and that the sheriff was out of town, a mob of white men gathered and they decided to take the law into their own hands. So when Dr. Taylor Hudson heard those galloping horses, he quickly got dressed and headed on down to the jail. 100 to 500 masked men flooded the jail and those masked men they were armed with axes hatchets crowbars and guns and the men they demanded that the jailer let them in where the prisoners were being held but the jailer he refused to give them the keys so the men they went ahead and just used their axes hatches and crowbars to break down the locks and the doors. And they broke everything down within five minutes. Now, it's been said that when the prisoners heard the mob breaking down the doors, they thought friends had come to break them out. So they began rejoicing and saying, 
Our friends have come to release us. They were excited. But once those doors came down, the mob, they riddled the cell with bullets. And they made sure to pump more and more into the cell if they saw the slightest movement inside the cell. Within five minutes, there was no movement within the cell and all nine men had met their end. Now, after the nine men met their end, they were buried all together in a mass grave in South Belton Cemetery. And once the citizens of the town found out about the mass grave of prisoners, they began to complain. And once the citizens complained more and more, something was done. Now, nothing was really done about the men's lives being taken. But a judge did order that the mass grave be exhumed and all men be buried separately. Now, remember I said there were 10 men. The 10th man, Tyree Thompson, he was within the jail during the massacre. Now, it is said that the only reason he escaped with his life is because he was ill and being held within another area of the jail when the massacre took place. Now, however, Thompson was later given a trial and he received a life sentence. And the large five pound heart shaped lock that was supposedly cut off the prisoner's cell is on display current day at the Bell County Museum. Now, although it is said that the key that is supposedly to go to that heart shaped lock does not fit. And the jail, the jail was sold after the massacre and turned into a private residence. And according to folklore, the jail or residence is very haunted. And the faces of the prisoners can still be seen in the windows of the upper rooms to this very day. Well, that brings us to the end of today's chat. But what do you think? Why do you feel the mob went so far for those particular type of crimes? I mean, no one besides one of the men supposedly had taken a life. It was just mainly stealing and, you know, horse robbery and all of that. And at this time, there was a lot going on and there were a lot of people dealing with um, shortages of food and things of that nature. So why do you think that mob went so far? And like I said, excluding the, you know, axe incident with the wife and all of that, um, we're talking about the petty crimes that was committed. Um, also, why do you feel nothing was done about what the mob did when they just took the law into their own hands? And do you think the old jail is actually haunted? And also, now the old jail is now a residence. Could you live in that as your residence? I mean, tell me what you think. Um, drop your thoughts in the comments below. Please like the video. Please share the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, peace, love, and blessings.